It's one of the great atmospheres in college soccer as the student band has made their way out on a Thursday night. It is senior night for the seniors here in Waco. Now, over the past few years, I think we've lost track of what that means. Because as of tonight, I think uh, there are some Big 12 players around the league who are celebrating their third senior night. It's a really interesting time. We're going to talk about all these transfers out on the field for both teams tonight. A lot of that happening in the portal because players graduate and they still have eligibility left with red shirts as well as the COVID extra year that they got. And so there's been a lot of kind of movement across the teams. Oklahoma State in the all black, Baylor in the all white. We'll mention for Baylor it is their leading goal scorer, Renetta Vargas, who's only played half the season, who's celebrating her birthday tonight. We already know what she is wishing for, and that's for her freshman year to continue on to Round Rock. Is good to see Grace Yoakum back up. Grace actually moved up to a new job description against Texas. She moved to the top of this formation trying to fill some voids of injured teammates. Well, she's their leading goal scorer with eight goals, and with Olivia Dow out, their second leading scorer with seven goals, they push her up a little bit further to field, try to help out. But without Dow on the field, they have been winless these last two games. Yoakum, 41 career goals at last check. That is the program mark that she has set this year with Oklahoma State, 21 of those for game winners throughout her career. As this will stay on the attack for Oklahoma State, they'll have a throw deep into Baylor territory. See if the Cowgirls can strike early. On the verge of being shut out by the Longhorns in Stillwater before Pineda found that goal to cut the deficit in half, two to one. Back in from Morris. As Obar is tripped up the foul. And a non-dangerous free kick coming up to get things restarted for Baylor. And Obar, one of the newcomers. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Morris. Kate Zerman, her sixth appearance on the year, her first start here in 2022. As Obar marking with Pineda. Pineda, the freshman out of the Chicago area. A late addition to this roster in the offseason. Colin Carmichael loves her in tight spaces out there on the field. And we saw her with a better than 30 yard, yard strike, a laser into the net. Oklahoma State and Baylor both were battling the win the other night. Back on Sunday, Kohlberg. Trying to find Vargas for the first touch for the freshman. Renetta Vargas, who has five goals through six starts as a freshman, missed all of non-conference in her first season, was in a boot. The boy made her debut in that starting lineup against Kansas. Not only found her first career goal, but found the game winner with 37 seconds left in that match for a brace. Two of her five goals already this year. She's in the center circle there right now as an onlooker. Back underway with Allie Jackson sending this one up ahead. Trying to work around Kohlberg, but a numbers game. Able to win that one away from Morris for the moment. And first touch early on for Lauren Trawick, the junior out of Austin, Texas. Boy, you know she is extra motivated, hoping Baylor can get to that tournament in Round Rock. She's a former Round Rock High School dragon. Would love to get back to her old stomping grounds. We talked about how the tournaments moved there just recently from Kansas. A lot better weather is hopeful in Round Rock than it had been in Kansas, although you can never tell. But lots of good players on these teams coming from Texas. We'll talk about Oklahoma State, where a lot of their recruits come out of the state of Texas. You mentioned Oklahoma State has traveled well. Part of that has been the schedule. As they went to both of the Kansas schools as well as Oklahoma, it was a four-game homestand for the Cowgirls since then. A loss to TCU, a win over Iowa State, a draw with West Virginia, a loss to Texas. But Oklahoma State was one of the last handful of teams still unbeaten at one point in this league. There's still three teams with one loss or fewer. Opportunity inside the box, just trying to slot that. Clearly determined to put down her right boot was Alex Morris. Didn't like it on the left. And in the end, never gets a shot. And it'll stay with the Cowgirls. See Molly Briner, the junior from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. 
You see he was battling illness this past weekend, but easily one of the most improved players on this year's team. Really gifted athlete in her third year with Oklahoma State. Has the throw coming up here for Morris. Five minutes in, we are scoreless in Waco. We will keep an eye on the action around the Big 12 tonight. A lot of ramifications. Obviously, Baylor can control its own destiny. If they can find a win tonight, they are moving on to Round Rock. Otherwise, they're going to need a lot of help. Tiebreakers do not favor Baylor in many categories. Kansas playing Iowa State tonight in Lawrence. The two teams at the moment below the line. Vargas. Obar with some space. Blythe up ahead to Vargas. Again, the freshman from Coppell outside of Dallas. Coppell High School has produced a lot of current Big 12 and past Big 12 talent. Currently players with Oklahoma and Texas as well as TCU come to mind. As Baylor tests that back line but cannot get inside the final 18. And Gabby Mueller applying the pressure able to win the ball back. Michigan native, making herself right at home these past few years here in Waco. Gabby Mueller, Kohlberg with the throw coming up. 17th start for Kohlberg this year. Into the feet of Vargas. Kohlberg, the defender pushing forward, looking for the distribution. As Oklahoma State unable to get the second touch on the turn from Gracie Ben Boydell. Ben Boydell already four goals this year. And her first go around with the Cowgirls. Can Baylor land the opening blow? Coyman on this one outside the area. Liz Coyman will send one towards the spot looking for Merrill. Twelfth start for Coyman this year. Just one goal so far. Remember she had that breakthrough game against West Virginia as a true freshman. Had a hat trick against the Mountaineers. A tough team to topple. But it seems like a lot of the Big 12 is caught up as West Virginia has made this league better. All right, set piece opportunity for Baylor. As we wrap up the eighth minute, Baylor looking to strike first. This one in the box, but squeezed out of the air by Nidus. Second straight year, Colin Carmichael's had a freshman in goal, and Nidus has been a good one. Had only given up nine goals all year, but last weekend, three goals, which still is a good weekend. That's 25% of your goals allowed all in one weekend against some pretty good teams. Yeah, I mean, Oklahoma State's only lost to the top two teams in this conference, UT and TCU, so they're looking really good going into the conference tournament, especially if they can get Dowell back, some of that offensive power back. Their defense is just so strong and consistent. And then, like you said, Nidus is just a special player that they've acquired. Colorado, Gatorade Player of the Year, best player out of Colorado, and uh, she's been huge for them. So they've got a strong defense. It's just getting those players back. Somebody in Colorado has a stern phone call from Tom Stone waiting for them. As the pipeline has often led to Lubbock, it seems like, in recent years. But kudos to Colin Carmichael and his staff. And Colin Carmichael's been with Oklahoma State since the inception of the program. It was Karen Hancock who was initially the head coach, but ever since then she's been there by his side as an assistant. When he took over the reins about 18 years ago, We've seen several successful coaches in this league have somebody right there side by side with them since they've arrived on campus, including in Lawrence as well as Fort Worth. Augustine 
plucked away on the boot of Pineda. Boy, wouldn't have been surprised if she tried to fire from there instead. Here's the shot denied by Trawick. As we are still scoreless 10 minutes into this one. That's Megan Haynes testing Trawick. Haynes is in there for the injured. Olivia Dowell up top, so she's getting the start there tonight. One goal on the year, but I think what's really important for Baylor is they were having such good possession before this, knocking the ball around, looking really sharp, moving off the ball with each other. I think that's been the story all year for Baylor is they have this ceiling of potential that is really fantastic. We've seen it against UT. We saw it here um, for spells, but they just can't seem to keep it consistent. And then if you turn the ball over in the middle and allow a player like Pineda to get a hold of it, they'll transition so quickly and punish you. So that's what Baylor got to sharpen up and coach Leonard has been working on all these things this year and uh, you hate to call it a rebuilding year after they finished third last year in the big 12 but I think with what she wants to do it is a lot of rebuilding kind of how they want to play Baylor's just scored one goal in their last three big 12 matches before that put up three goals in Ames Iowa and their last big 12 victory of the year so far again a win tonight on senior night Means the seniors get to suit up again in Round Rock on Sunday, likely as the eighth seed. The best part is, if you're watching us right now, you're going to have access to that Big 12 tournament through the quarterfinals and semifinals, as it too will be on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. The bad news is, is if after 90 minutes tonight you're tired of our voices, well, we'll work on that. Look forward to being in Round Rock. As again, Zimmerman getting the start tonight. Hallie Augustin unavailable. First missed start for Hallie. Hannah back in the lineup once again. As Michelle Leonard able to lean on two true freshmen in her starting back line this season. Michelle mentioned that Sky Leach is lumped in as a triplet with those two just because they all come from Flower Mound. Fire Mound High School, where they were teammates together. But one of them's a little bit easier to identify than the other two. Patterson, to her longtime teammate. Quick touch from Merrill, and this one wide of the frame, scooped up by Nidus. Nine goals allowed all year. That's a .63 goals against average per match. And that will always with a number like that, puts you among the best in the country, let alone in the Big 12. Looking for a run from Patterson. It's going to be a big ask as Alex Morris lets it drift across the end line. A goal kick for Nidus. Mueller in a foot race with Blythe, uh, pardon me, Blythe Beldner. The latter of the four-year Missouri Tiger who transfers for her final year to Stillwater. Beldner slid in as the right wing back. When adjustments had to be made, pushing players forward in place of some injured teammates. Nice job by Kaylee Abels winning that ball for Trawick to boot back up to midfield. Of course, we're in Central Time Zone. There's that one Big 12 member over in the Eastern Time Zone, so they got underway an hour before us, but West Virginia and K-State are still scoreless. Kansas and Baylor don't mind that, as K-State still has not locked up one of the two remaining spots. Kansas and Baylor also in contention. One of those three will be disappointed at the end of the night. Merrill battling hip to hip with Kiana Simon. Boy, Colin Carmichael big on Simon. 
lot like Brian, are aggressive, athletic, often is marking the best attacker of the opponents. And that's a good look at how Oklahoma State defends on that back line. It's a three back, essentially, and they mark touch tight. They track, you can see there, Simon, tracking the runner all the way to the right. So they don't zone, they don't exchange with each other. They follow their mark all over the field. So it's a bit of a different formation that Baylor's facing. Haynes sends one in. Once again, Trawick intervenes. What likely was looking to link up with teammate Ben Boydell. But Trawick makes sure that that connection's not made. Abel's product from right here, Waco High School. What a career she has had on that back line for Baylor. Remember back in 2020, Baylor was completing a run where they went 12 full months without conceding a goal at home. The no goal patrol in full force. That's gone international. Jen Watt helping elevate her Swedish team via promotion and a trophy this past week. As we are seeing Big 12 players both in the NWSL domestically and several others get chances abroad. Obar with some space, a heavy touch though as that'll end the attack. And Obar is gonna be called for the foul here, colliding with Briner. And I was thinking Lincoln about, you know, why is this team struggling so much this year after finishing third in the Big 12 last year and their defense having been so solid. And then I did think about Jen Want and goal. And I thought about Sarah Norman in the back. And I thought about Allie Ender Anderson, Henderson, sorry, in the middle. Like I really do feel like those three players as seniors not only were they awesome players on the field, but they were such good leaders. And I think maybe something that's what's missing right now is a little bit of that leadership um, for this team that's so new. And it's also all these transfers from Dallas Baptist. That's kind of awkward, right? When you come into a team to try to be a leader if you're from another school. So I think that might also be an element that's missing here. Yeah, what you just rattled off was the spine of the team last year, center back along with the key midfielder and your goalkeeper. Yeah, you talk about the awkwardness of a, somebody who's been a leader at their previous team coming in with new faces at an established program. I'm always impressed when I see a freshman who's already taking over the reins, especially when it's a freshman goalkeeper who's being a vocal leader. And I think we've been talking a lot about, right, the injuries to Taylor Moon and Mackenzie Anthony up top. And where is Baylor going to find that offense? And that, that has been a question all year. But I also have kind of come to realize just what big losses those three were on the field and also just vocally as leaders. Um, I know, you know, Al Allie Henderson Ashkenos was just so good about pulling the team together and being that captain on the field kind of uh, mentally. And so I think, uh, you know, there's a little bit of growing pains in that area when you have a new coach and they come in and they start different players in different places and they bring their own players from their old school. So that's just kind of it's going to be just part of the growing process for this team. I think they're going to really gel a bit better as they're fi they find their identity under this new coach. A draw, by the way, tonight would not be the worst thing for Baylor, but only a win will automatically clinch them one of those spots. There's a lot of soccer left here in this senior night, regular season finale in the Big 12 Conference. But so far, neither side able to find any kind of separation on that scoreboard. See Michelle Leonard across the way. Again, our referee, Rashawn Clark, assisted tonight by Thomas Sumzik and Mark Romig. Our fourth official at the table, Eddie Slaughter. Trying to send one through for Patterson. And that one will eclipse the inline for a goal kick for Nidus coming up. Oklahoma State last year was the team dealing with injuries. Still managed to find a fourth place finish as they were the four seed against Texas Tech last year, the five seed. They would play in Round Rock in the quarterfinals to a scoreless draw after 110 minutes. And we will go back to that overtime format when we get to Round Rock. As we have not seen overtime the regular season in the NCAA this year. 
But we'll go back to the two 10-minute halves with a golden goal available, followed by a shootout if necessary. And more often than not, it tends to be necessary in a couple of those games in the quarterfinals as sometimes conservatively teams are looking to play. Morris. Remember Oklahoma State missed out on the NCAA tournament last year, the year prior. They were among everybody going over to North Carolina. They played two matches, including one against Don Carmichael's alma mater, South Alabama, before falling in a draw to Texas A&M in the second round in a shootout. After that one was knotted up 3-3 in regulation. Of course, Eric Bell's done a nice job. Top 15 RPI for TCU. They have to feel pretty good, even if they don't find that automatic bid, which they did claim last year in Round Rock. But I think there's some teams with questions this year, some lower RPIs this season. Part of it is West Virginia is not a world beater like they have been in recent years. That's also opened up the race for actual hardware in this league. Ange Kelly, in her 11th year, has locked up her first piece of a trophy in the regular season. Tonight against Oklahoma, they'll try to make that all their own. Otherwise, TCU and Tech, if there's a winner tonight between those two, could wind up getting a share of it all. As the attack continues here for the Cowgirls, midway through the opening half, You, uh, when we were actually going through the standings, Lincoln, you know, and I saw that Texas was ranked number 25 and <laughs> TCU was, was beneath them and yeah. ranked higher than them at, at 12. <laughs> it's all RPI. That's RPI. It's, it's really strange. I mean, Texas only has one loss, you know, and they're, they're 25th. I mean, and that's, that was to the number one team in the nation at the time. Yeah, and that's North, North Carolina, and now they're number two even. So... It's really frustrating when you're these teams. I mean, luckily as a player, you don't really think about it. You just kind of are wanting to start <laughs> and play. But um, for coaches, I think it's really yeah. frustrating. And um, Texas probably can use that fire of like, you know, disrespect why we're ranked so low and we've only lost one game all year. And it was to the number three, a uh, number two team now in the nation. But uh, I think the key here is that the NCAA just doesn't seem to give the same respect to the Big 12 as they give to the ACC and the Pac-12. So that's what's really tough on teams like Oklahoma State is they feel like they've got to win the conference either in the tournament or the regular season to give themselves a true chance because you and I have seen in the past one or two teams go out of yeah. the Big 12 and that's it, even though this is a tough league and there's really good records. So it's uh, it can be really frustrating the hearing kind of where the RPIs stand. I, I actually was looking at it a little deeper a couple days ago and there's actually an undefeated team really deep in the at South Dakota State has never lost this year, but they're so deep in RPI, they could not make the tournament if they don't win their conference tournament, which is wild to think an undefeated team loses once in their tournament and they don't go. Yeah, the Jackrabbits are in a league where even if you were to go undefeated in the regular season, we've seen this from some other schools as well, like Stephen F. Austin out of the Southland, now they're in the WAC, but if you don't win your conference tournament, you are not getting in at large bit. Cowgirls trying to find separation right now. The Texas Longhorns have some separation. They've already found two goals tonight on their senior night against Oklahoma. Of course, that's a future SEC battle between those two, but Texas looks like they are not in a sharing mood of that trophy. And by, by the way, right now, scary moment here with Kate Zerman down. Remember, she's in the starting lineup because they're already down one defender. And she's in place of Augustine this evening. As Hallie Augustine unavailable tonight. Michelle Leonard and her staff come out. A little past the midway point here. But again, Texas up a couple of goals on Oklahoma. That Bedlam series in a few years might be in question. We used to see Oklahoma and Oklahoma State play twice each year, one time outside a conference and once in Big 12 play. But I think as we've been talking about RPI, that's what's on the mind of Mark Carr at Oklahoma and Colin Carmichael at Oklahoma State. 
when the Big 12 gets an influx of several very good programs, and of course, Oklahoma over there in the SEC with some great talent, they may not see uh, the ability to schedule one another in what would be non-conference in their only possible meeting of the season. As Colin Markle, uh, pardon me, Colin Carmichael right now taking advantage of this opportunity to talk to his women, trying to get back in that win column before moving on to Round Rock. Again, a six-time Big 12 Coach of the Year. See Cole Lowren, one of the new assistants for Baylor, talking things over with the Bears, including tonight's birthday girl, Renata Vargas, with that eight on her back. As Kate Zerman is being helped off the pitch, not putting all of her body weight on her foot. And so a thin back line for Baylor. Just got even thinner, and you hope that Kate will be back on her feet soon. But both these programs know all about injuries and all the obstacles that have been thrown at them over these past couple of years. Well, I can attest to how frustrating it is to finally get your opportunity. And Kate Zimmerman's kind of been waiting for her chance and hasn't played in a ton of games this year, finally getting your chance and then getting injured. So it's similar. Uh, my sophomore year played just eight games before I tore my knee again for the fourth time. So it's just so frustrating. You just work so hard to get to this point. So I really feel for, for Kate and also her teammates. I mean, her teammates know how hard she's worked to get to this point to get some minutes and really prove herself. And you can see it on Coach Leonard's face too, how empathetic she is. Um, so really just a bummer for, for Kate and uh, the Baylor squad, but we'll see uh, Sarah Horniak come on, who's a really talented outside player, very Getting fast, gets some great crosses into the box, has a great Sarah shot Horniak as well. So we're gonna see what kind of shift Coach Leonard does here centrally. Is she gonna put Augustin in the middle there alongside Abels and uh, put Horniak out wide? Yeah, Sarah Horniak now in her third year, a two-year starter, we'll give you a look at uh, the moments when Zimmerman went down, uh, but the night for Kate Zimmerman clearly has come to a conclusion as Kate, the center back sophomore out of Houston's Clear Lake High School. But Horniak again, a former starter in her own right throughout her career. And again, those non-contact injuries are the ones you like to see the least. Yeah, you can just see her, her knee give out there as well. And crash to the ground really frustrating because it's like <laughs> you've run and dribbled a million times in your life like why did this one step all of a sudden uh, create an injury but yeah we don't want to speculate too much hopefully it's not as bad as it sounds and and she can get back quickly but Baylor's gotta you know work for her keep this season alive try and find a goal here and uh, take the win today to ensure their, their season continues we are scoreless right now. Big 12 regular season finales are underway all throughout the Big 12 as all 10 teams are in action across a couple of time zones. Good look at Simon, the junior from Denton, Texas, went to Denton Ryan High. The junior who was an everyday starter just about last year, continuing this year as well. As Baylor will be able to defend and clear this one up to midfield back over to Oklahoma State. And Baylor at TCU here the other day, back on Sunday. The Cowgirls during the game, number 14, Emma Levin. That was scoreless at halftime where the Horned Frogs found two goals. And, well, a former Oklahoma Sooner crossing over to the other side of Bedlam these days as Emma Ledbetter coming in off the bench. Now she missed her first year with Oklahoma State last year with the injury, but she was one of the players that Colin Carmichael plugged in back in Stillwater on their senior day this past weekend. Already working on her graduate degree. We've seen a few former Sooners find other homes around the 
the Big 12. I was thinking about this, though, uh, as I was watching that game and, and noticing that she, you know, was from Oklahoma. Is that like if I had gone to USC after? Like, is this yeah. is this okay to do? Is this like Texas going to A&M for your master's degree? I don't know if it's okay. I'm not sure how I feel about it. But I tell you what, if I had gotten into USC for my master's, I probably would have gone. So <laughs> I would have set aside the rivalry, you know, for the program. No, ask the mailman. He'll tell you Oklahoma is okay. Okay. <laughs> As right now down is Grace Yoakum, and this is a trend we want to see stop. Yeah, especially, uh, you know, um, with the tournament rolling around here. I mean, I was really thinking about not just how maybe they shouldn't play Olivia Dowell at all, but maybe not even Grace Yoakum or some of these other starters because Oklahoma State is for sure in the Big 12 tournament in the postseason, and it's more about can they improve their seeding at this point. But they're just knocked around so much, especially Yoakum. Yeah, for a second straight year, it looks like they will be in the four seed versus five seed game in the quarterfinal. Coyman has Patterson, will try to find her new teammate. Just could not get that ball to settle. But this stays with Baylor on the attack, and it's been a while since Baylor's been on the front foot here. Kohlberg will do the honors. Ava last year as a true freshman plugged right into that back line as a starter. She finds the standout freshman this year, Vargas. Kohlberg, her service is into the box. Oklahoma State doesn't get the touch they want. It's going to be a corner kick as Kiana Simon. Not the touch she wanted. Not exactly a disaster, though. Nobody for Baylor in the area to take advantage instantly. But here's Coyman with the corner kick. Can Baylor break through on a set piece? Coyman sends it in. Looking back post and a foul on Baylor. We'll put a halt to this opportunity. It's too bad. And only one corner kick this entire half. You really want to make the most of those chances. Those set pieces have been so crucial, especially to Baylor. They've scored off of a couple of corner kicks this year and have been really dangerous with kind of miscleared balls around the 18 yard box as well. So you, you would expect Baylor to really take hold of those chances as much as possible. Let's see if there's a card coming the way for Ashley Merrill as Rashawn Clark has halted play but also asked for Merrill to return for a chat. And see if there's also a motioning for a trainer. As back up to her feet is Yoakum. And this is just a stern lecture at the moment from Rashawn Clark. He's talking to Kaylee Abels. As no card shown. A restart from Allie Jackson. On the fly, and Trawick had a good read on it. Otherwise, that would be a goal from midfield. Patterson. Gabby Mueller into some space. That's Horniak. She's capable of great service from the wing. She'll dribble in for a closer look. A push in the box, they'll play on. Well, Baylor fans thought Liz Coyman had won the right for a penalty for a teammate. Rashawn Clark thought otherwise. Hopefully we'll get to see a replay, but I don't understand these. If the ref doesn't call that, then he should card Coyman. You know, for right for, simula for simulation. So yeah. it's, it's either one or the other. It's not in the middle. So it's either a foul or it's not a foul, and she's diving. So there's got to be some sort of consequence there. So that's what's uh, really frustrating to me is when it's nebulous and you just can't really tell what they're thinking. How do you learn from that too as a player? I don't know. Yeah, one or the other happened. As again, here's Merrill with the turn out wide to Colbert. As we are going end to end now in this match after a half hour of scoreless soccer. And for Baylor, it's getting a little more dire as the Jayhawks are up on Iowa State 1-0 right now. 
And that would mean if Baylor does not find a win against Oklahoma State here on senior night, this will be the final time the seniors suit up. What a year for Mark Francis' women. I say that not because they're setting records in the win column, but half of their starting lineup uh, has been unavailable to him with injuries this year. They finally won that conference tournament the last year it was in Kansas City. Boy, that was a special team with Katie McClure. Talk mm. about pro players. Yeah. As Merrick has been playing really well for Kansas City. And that just was a great team that won that championship, deservedly won the title. That was 2019. There was no tournament in 2020, and they missed out on Round Rock last year. And they're in jeopardy of missing out again as now we're seeing Megan Haynes along with Hannah Augustine getting tangled up. Vargas. Mueller up the spawn. Again, staying glued to Coyman is Kiana Simon. Nidus on her line waiting for that next shot to come, and that pass was just off the mark behind the intended teammate. As Abels tries to get them back on track. for Renetta Vargas. This might be the first time she's been playing soccer on her birthday. Of course, high school soccer is a spring sport. I'm not sure if she ever had a club match. Baylor's getting closer to making a couple of subs. Another look here at the last foul. Not sure I see a whole lot there. Shoulder to shoulder at. Merrill, I think, is just being watched so closely at this point by the official. Ball stays with the Cowgirls. They send one in. And that one dribbled across the end line as the attack is over for the moment for Oklahoma State. And the substitutions will come on for Michelle Leonard and Baylor. A couple of good options off the bench for Leonard these days, including Maddie Algie and Haven Terry to close out the final 12 minutes of this opening half. Terry's still looking for her first goal since the season opener when she found an equalizer in the second half against Minnesota. As they try to find Terry at midfield. Merrill. Merrill really has not even tried to turn against Nia Johnson tonight. This transfer from Mississippi State. As Pineda holding her own there on the near touch line, but back over to Baylor. I think officially Baylor with three saves tonight. All of them pretty manageable for Lauren Trawick, who got the starting nod tonight. Nidus almost got caught in between on a ball. It was a little heavy for Algie to find it. Nidus thought a defender of hers would help shield that ball away, but in the end, no damage done. Entering the game for Oklahoma State, number 20, Erica McIntyre replacing number 10, Nia Johnson. Johnson will come off. Erica McIntyre, the senior from Fort Worth, Former Missouri Tiger enters for the 18th time this year. See Algie there at the top of your screen. Pretty unusual for her to be up top. She's typically a center midfielder and sometimes plays pretty deep for Coach Leonard and as well as in years past. She's a fifth year senior, so I wonder if Coach Leonard has been trying something new this week, or if she just wants to get her senior up top there, maybe get a goal. But typically, Merrill will move into that striker position, and then Algie will come in the center mid. So kind of an interesting change here to see Maddie Algie up top. Attack over for Baylor. Foul called 
on the green and gold. In Oklahoma State this year, three wins, three draws, just two defeats in Big 12 play. We were a couple of weekends into conference, still had half the league almost unbeaten. And basically, they all played each other. That has put Texas in the driver's seat. And it looks like tonight they're on pace to close out an outright title for the first time under Ange Kelly since she came over 11 years ago from that other UT in Knoxville. Although Mark Carr's women are making it interesting, they pulled one goal back. They able to slip one past the sixth year senior goalkeeper Savannah Madden. Stroke from Coyman ultimately goes wide of that near post across the way. But the match that obviously affects Baylor the most, as you see Coyman on that post, just unable to keep it inside the frame. With eight and a half still to go here in this opening half. And the two teams below Baylor right now are playing each other tonight in Lawrence. Kohlberg able to put an end to that run as Augustine will win it back. And this may stay. No, it is Baylor's throw coming up. And first, a substitution for the Bears. For the Bears, entering number five, Sky Leach. It'll be the first minutes of the night for Sky Leach. Mentioned high school teammate of the Augustine Twins at Flower Mound High School. She comes on for Mueller. 13th, 14th appearance, pardon me, for Sky. That's one of those positions that Baylor had a lot of depth, but she has found minutes and already a touch here. Well, Mueller just went off. She's been playing really well in this game and really all year long, but remember, Lincoln, she wasn't starting at the beginning of the year for Coach Leonard. And uh, that was, I guess, a question for Coach Leonard is who would she start in that midfield? She really locked in on Merrill early and Obar from Dallas Baptist who came over with her, but didn't seem to really know which to start between Maddie Algy and, and Gabby Mueller and eventually made the switch to Mueller being the starter in there. And uh, I really do think Mueller is just such an engine and really effective dribbler. I really like her in that middle in terms of uh, shot production as well. Just not enough so far here tonight. I mean, both these teams really need to start pushing forward numbers and trying to get some more shots. Yeah, well, we've seen some matches where Mueller's been able to change the game in just a split moment's notice. Algy out there right now, putting in work. And she has made six starts this season. Merrill will win this ball. Over to Horniak. And Horniak came on for the injured Kate Zerman. Coyman will track it down. She's got four teammates who have pushed forward, all staying on side. Coyman got the shot off a moment ago. But Oklahoma State, well disciplined on that back line, able to win it back. And let's see if they can put a counter together and find the opening goal. Well, the answer is no. Obar wins it back. Here's Baylor's chance with Nidus back on her line. They'll send it into Algae and just not enough behind that ball to get it past Nidus. Best chance of the night for Baylor. As all of this has occurred with a cowgirl down, specifically Grace Yoakum for a second time tonight. Again, three times honored by the Big 12 Conference in her tenure. Your all-time leading goal scorer in this club's history. At the moment favoring that right foot. Boy, Jordan Nidus thought she might have to step up with some heroics a moment ago. Algy just on a tough ball, got behind it, but not enough to really test the freshman in goal who's looking for another shutout before her regular season comes to an end. It was hard to tell if that one was even on frame, but I think Nidus, no matter what, wanted to make sure and just push it out of the way. But good runs here from Algy into the box and some nice service. You saw a really good curling ball from Merrill into that area. 
and then uh, Quayman getting it out wide as well and Horniak. So they've got the right idea, Baylor. It's just a matter of that final execution. Again, that's been a theme for them all year long is they get themselves in good situations. They just can't seem to get that final clear shot on goal. And Grace Yoakum at least able to put weight on it. Hopefully that's something that will loosen up for her. They are giving Nidus her first save of the night. It's just the 51st save they've needed from her this year. And she's stopped better than 84% of the shots she has seen so far. She would love a sixth shutout before the end of the regular season. And she talks things over with Beldner before this corner kick from Coyman. And they say Oklahoma State did not keep that ball in play. Coyman lost one into the penalty spot. Merrill with the first touch on it, but heads it one. Baylor's been outscored this year now 30 to 15. Conversely, Oklahoma State's outscored their opponents 29 to 12. Almost mirror opposites. That's not a given when you bring in a, a newcomer like Nidus in her first year of college soccer. There are three bears there that Beldner was trying to work through. And when Baylor has 11 on the field, they still have about 20 on the bench over there to help cheer on their teammates as you hear them cheer on in approval a moment ago when they won that ball back. This will stay, though, with Oklahoma State inside the final five minutes of the opening half. Opportunity into the box. Treywick does not let that one slip loose from her fingertips. Otherwise, Megan Haynes would have been there to clean things up. Very quick reaction there from Treywick. She had to get to that immediately. Haynes was just right on it. All she had to do was just tap it in. And Treywick, very good at anticipating where that cross was going to go, immediately stomped on that. Mentioned Longhorns leading Oklahoma 2-1, to one, nearing halftime. And Lawrence, the Jayhawks have just reached the 45-minute 40 minute mark. They've gone into halftime leading 1-0 over Iowa State as our officials come together. We can tell you that Texas Tech and TCU, who came into today still with hopes of a share of a trophy if Texas slipped up, are currently scoreless at the break. And at the moment, we are four minutes away from being scoreless at the break. Although it seems like a lot happens in the closing moments of a period. Let's see if either of these two teams can find separation. Sean Clark still sorting some things out with the Cowgirls. As Nidus in a moment will handle a kick for Oklahoma State. Already a 10-win season for Oklahoma State. Just three losses, four draws. Two of those three losses in conference play. And we're about to resume soccer, I'm told. Low driving kick from Nidus, headed down by Obar. Coyman, pass to tackle. Had Terry in space, but also had a cowgirl ready to shut her down and Molly Briner. Haynes, a little heavy on the touch. And this is back over to Baylor. Talking about Molly Briner. Junior, not yet a captain, but I think Colin Carmichael expects that next year as a senior, she'll very much be one of the leaders of this group. Tolberg, just a sophomore out of Frisco. 
north of Dallas. Of course, that's the home of the National Soccer Hall of Fame these days. Look at Sky Leach winning this ball back. Blythe Obar wondering why she needs to be a prop as Haynes is called for the foul. And Rashawn Clark now needing to separate some individuals. And it's Merrill who's going to pick up the yellow. Remember, she came close to a yellow earlier in this one. And Rashawn Clark has seen enough in this opening half. Yeah, I was thinking earlier that maybe they should just take Merrill off for the half because she started doing some kind of things like kicking the ball away and just uh, instigating when she didn't need to be because she's already been called for so many fouls there in the middle. Um, you know, and just give her a chance to calm that frustration down. I mean, gosh, that's the last thing you would want, right, is a red card when you have to win this game. You really have to win to keep your season alive. It would be a second straight match for Oklahoma State that an opponent named Ashley would be ejected from a match. We saw that from Texas in a moment that did not affect the outcome. Texas technically figure, finished short a player. Kohlberg sends this one in. Cowgirl struggling on the clearance. Nidus cleans things up. And it's Ashlyn Miller at Texas who end of the game <laughs> you know it's just one of those lapses and um, frustration but you could see it with Ashlyn Miller when she came off the field how angry she was and upset about that so that's just like that's up to the coach though is to kind of recognize the mentality of your players and manage them and uh, the game really well so we'll see uh, how Merrill does here and I know coach Leonard really loves Merrill believes in her she had 15 goals for coach Leonard at Dallas Baptist last year was their goal leader remember this is a Dallas Baptist team that put up 69 goals last year just incredible amount of offense so these Dallas Baptist players that have come over coach Leonard really believes that they are D1 caliber players and deserve to be in that starting lineup. So Merrill does come out for the rest of the first half. Again, she and Michelle Leonard, they've worn both the red and blue of Dallas Baptist together, and now the green and gold. She knows what Merrill is capable of, but a silly yellow there at the end of the opening half, and it's important to stay full strength with 11. We do see Olivia Mack for the one first minute, time. One Cupboard is not bare in Waco. Of the healthy bodies you have, you have a lot of individuals who have already tasted success in their young careers. Baylor pushing forward inside the final minute with their season on the line. And a pretty slippery grip on that eight spot into the conference tournament with Kansas up at halftime against Iowa State. If Baylor does not find a win tonight, Kansas would outright leap them with a win. If Baylor didn't win tonight and Kansas simply had a draw, they would still win a tiebreaker on goal differential. Talking about the Jayhawks. Now, if Baylor can maintain this for another 45 minutes and Iowa State is able to pull even with Kansas State, that's a different story. But right now, final match of the regular season with no guarantee of playing soccer beyond tonight. It is Baylor and Oklahoma State scoreless at halftime. We'll step aside when you rejoin us. Hope to have a chance to check in with head coach Colin Carmichael of Oklahoma State. Helping those who help others. That so much. He loves Oklahoma State. Obviously, he's been there for so long. And so he has this, like, intense joy and passion during the game that can kind of seem like aggressive but his actual personality is very like loose and fun loving and um just really is such a character and, and i think uh 
it just shows that he really cares. He loves soccer. He cares about the players and the team, wants them to do the best that they can do. So it's just kind of a different style of coach. We've seen that in other types of coaches like Tom Stone at Texas Tech. So uh, all these coaches kind of have their different uh, temperaments, and, and it's about what fits you best as a player. And I can tell you that uh, from the players I've talked to at Oklahoma State, they just love Colin Carmichael and that passion he brings to the game. Again, a six-time Big 12 head coach of the year, a six-time Big 12 champion. There was that tremendous run that they had about a decade back where they were every year either getting a regular season or a postseason trophy out of this conference. You rattled off some names of coaches around the league who have put in that time, pouring that foundation, and they are now seeing the fruit. That's what Michelle Leonard is up against, as it doesn't matter which of these programs you inherit, what kind of condition they're in, none of the existing coaches are going to make it easy on you your first year and think that you're just going to be able to skate your way into the postseason. Now, clearly, Michelle Leonard's doing a lot of the right things, and you expect to see that pay off sooner rather than later. And I think that's something she can take away from this season if, if it does end after tonight is that if you look at all the coaches in the Big 12, it took them a long time to win championships. If you t look at Tom Stone, I mean, remember how emotional he was in 2015 when they won that uh, Big 12 tournament title? And it just took a while to get there. Same for Coach Kelly at Texas. I mean, look how long it's taken her. And um, we've seen, obviously, Coach Carmichael been at Oklahoma State for, you know, decades now. Sorry, Coach, but decades. And uh, also, Nikki Izzo Brown has been working at yeah. West Virginia for decades. I mean, it takes time. So I think... You know, for Coach Leonard to have some perspective on, hey, to do this my first year is probably very unlikely. And even Coach Bell, who got to the final his first year at TCU, it still took him a while to win a championship as well at TCU. So I think after the season's done, she'll have that perspective of, you know, it's going to take some time to get there. Haynes was a catalyst at time in that first half. You noticed the birthday girl, Renetta Vargas, got a card from the referee. No money fell out of it. As she is playing on a yellow, one of two yellows handed out to Baylor in this one now. Uh, just two and a half minutes, Vargas, boy, five goals through her first six collegiate starts, today being her seventh start. As again, you have a feeling you know what she wished for. Chance to continue playing college soccer here in her freshman year. Going down south to Round Rock. As Coleman battling for this ball and late indication that it is a corner kick for Baylor. Or do I have a, I'm already turned around. This is Oklahoma State with the corner kick, pardon me. It looks like it might actually be a foul. And just a, no, yeah, it, it'll be uh, basically a modified corner kick. It's almost field hockey. As this is Pineda, we know she can send a line drive into that box if she wants to create some chaos. She'll put a little loft into it, and Treywick able to squeeze it in. So a fourth save for Treywick. Haven't needed to see any heroics, but remember she was just a spectator that last home game on Sunday. As the starting nod for a third time this year went to Madison Martin. For Treywick, this now her 14th start. Martin, a transfer from Texas Tech in the offseason. That is Ben Boydell. Gracie Ben Boydell again, four goals this year. Half of those for the freshmen have been game winners. Saw her miss the Texas match with a head injury. One of a couple players who have come back as the throw pending here from Alex Morris. Morris, who's been stuck over the years behind Webb and Charmaine Morgan on the depth chart, finally seeing the minutes here in 2022. As Treywick will get us back underway here in the 50th minute. Mueller back on the pitch as Algie gets the starting nod in the second half. Again, she was the topic that you chose with Michelle Leonard there. Pushing forward here to start the second half. 
just as she did when she subbed on. Of course, Maddie's gone through more than her fair share of knee injuries as well. I do like that idea of her posting up and then trying to turn and play in Coyman and Patterson running off of her. Maddie Algie's so good at through balls and uh, placing it at the perfect pace in front. So we're going to see if she can figure out a way to get the ball at her feet. You see, saw that misconnection there. I mean, this is unusual for Vargas and Algie to be kind of switching spots. So it's going to take a minute for them to figure out that connection. Mueller hip to hip with Beltner. And nice job winning a goal kick for Trawick. Lauren did not play last year, the junior. Only Alyssa Navarrete saw any minutes, 13 minutes that Jen Want did not play in goal last year. So Baylor has not seen any minutes this year from a keeper who had previously been between the pipes for them. Mueller. Opportunity into Coyman, a beautiful ball, and just mishandles it, then is taken down from behind. It'll be a free kick for Baylor. And a yellow card as well. Oh, Beltner bails out Coyman, who otherwise would have had nightmares about that ball. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, I mean, but she just doesn't make a good touch, and it looks like Beltner just slips. Yeah. and falls right into Coyman and it's really unlucky and I'm sure that's what she's explaining is you know that was out of my control I just slipped and fell right into her but the truth is is it really doesn't matter if it was intentional or not if you take out a player it's considered a foul and a good opportunity here for Baylor. Well it's Coyman slamming on the brakes and then loses her footing because she is taken out by Beldner so here is a free kick from just inside 30 yards for the Bears. Abels, the senior, sends one off the crossbar. It'll linger as Oklahoma State struggles to clear it out but gets the first four touches. Oh, Kaylee Abels trying to find the difference maker. And perhaps just one goal is all it would take to extend her Baylor career. But a goal kick coming up from Jordan Nidus. And she wants the woodwork help her out there. Wow. Remember, if Baylor finds a lead and finds a way to defend that lead, all this talk we've had about a season ending tonight comes to an end, unlike the season. Horniak in place of Zerman. There'll be a corner kick coming up for the Cowgirls. Nicely done. As Beldner, a little extra motivation after she felt like she was wronged by that yellow, able to win the corner. Oklahoma State corner to be taken by number 13, Excorrect Pineda. As Pineda, we've already seen her with the first corner on the night for Oklahoma State, now with the second from this corner. Will be another low drive. Wait, wait, wait! It is. Oh, 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 step off. They got the first touch, but never tested Trawick as they'll now loft one into the box. Haynes, 17 yards from goal. Her first effort's blocked, as Baylor creating some congestion and another blocked shot at the top of the 18. And this will be a corner kick for the Cowgirls. Their third after having none in the first half. Third for Pineda and company here in half number two in the opening nine minutes since re-emerging. Or the second period of play. This time it'll be a right-footed in-swinger of sorts. Cowgirls looking for that first strike. That one just eluded a couple of ponytails. As Baylor survives back-to-back -back corners, but it is still cowgirl ball. Baylor's done a really good job of defending these corners. Remember, Gracie Oakham so dangerous on those set pieces. He's got the height, too, at 5'9". 
and they've just been all over her. You can see that Pineda service is targeting Yoakum every single time, and they've just been touch tight bumping Yoakum so that they get to the ball first. We're just glad we're still saying Grace Yoakum's name. Of course, went down a couple times in that first half. Her teammate, Pineda, will continue to handle these set pieces. This is after a foul was called a moment ago. Ten minutes into the second half. And Trawick able to track that one down from Ali Jackson. Not sure if it would have been on frame, but regardless, we're still scoreless. Nil-nil. Allie Jackson, the grad student from Allen High School, the former Allen Eagle. Been on that back line since her freshman year and as a trusted defender for the Cowgirls. And uh, this lack of stress at the end of the season appears to be contagious. A lot of fun being had by those not at the moment out there on the pitch. Part of that's just the environment here with the student band making their way out for most of these home matches. Abel's trying to lead Coyman, but nothing comes of that. Beltner now. Abel's will go back to her day job, trying to shut things down defensively against Ben Boydell. Keep it away. Keep it away. Trying to take the chair Keep out from away. under Ben Boydell. Ball sent oh. in as that probe's denied by Baylor. Cowgirls back on it, 30 yards out. There comes the shot from distance off the mark from Yoakum. Looking for number 42 of her career. I think for Trawick, biggest accomplishment so far in this one that she's been called upon for is just keeping that back line organized for those corner kicks that Oklahoma State's now had three times in this half. Both of our goalkeepers, for the most part, pretty manageable day in terms of shots coming their way. A couple of first-year netminders for these respective programs. Another stroke from distance off the crossbar. And an offside flag makes it a moot point. Might show up on some highlight reels as the woodwork has now treated both teams equally. It was Abel's denied earlier on the opposite end. But even if it had bounced home, it'd be a moot point with the offside flag up. We saw Pineda fire one of those from better than 30 yards out in Stillwater back on Sunday, and it did not hit the woodwork. She's been very impressive tonight. I really like her service off those set pieces. I like her movement off the ball. She's been a playmaker. I like her getting forward, and obviously, if she can get forward more, she's just got such a shot on her as we saw her score that goal here uh, recently. And uh, she just hasn't been able to get up, you know, up that high very often. Two changes for Michelle Leonard, including Olivia Mack for Vargas. Vargas coming off for the first time since picking up that yellow. I also saw Micah Beasley coming on for Jenna Patterson. And with the ball on this end near the student band, that's when the band picks up its tempo. Getting some Lindsay Horan vibes from Grace Yoakum. Uh, Horan tends to be on the ground quite a bit, and it is a Horan kind of night for Yoakum there as uh, Gabby Mueller gets an elbow into her back. It just seems like Yoakum's seeing a lot of the grass. It's what happens though when you're a physical center mid. I remember being on the ground quite a bit as well <laughs> in the middle. I mean, especially if you like to dribble or you're good in the air and you're going up for 50-50s constantly, you're just constantly getting knocked down. Well, of course, Baylor historically was a team that you're going to need some ice by the end of the night and probably a good stain stick for your kit as well. And just because there's a change of the guard in terms of Michelle Leonard and what Colin Carmichael noticed was a noticeable style change in play doesn't mean that there's not going to be some contact here at Betty Lou. A lot of teams when they're scouting Baylor, it's not so much about them being physical as being disruptive. They disrupt 
the way you like to play. And I think Baylor's done a really good job of doing that tonight against Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State does like to knock the ball around, and they're just not having a, as much luck. I was kind of surprised, too, because Oklahoma State is playing an unusual formation. They're not doing the 4-3-3 that we've seen match up so well against Baylor. They've got this um, lot of numbers in the back as we see this opportunity dissolve for Baylor. But they typically play this 3-4-1-2 formation where sometimes it looks like a five back. And we've seen that with some other teams. But uh, Baylor's done well adjusting to it. Olivia Mack trying to slip one into the area. Oklahoma State not interested in giving that one up. As this ball being won back by Pineda. Putting in work on both ends, but it will elude her on the end line. It will be another corner for Baylor now. After the last three had gone the way of the Cowgirls. Can Baylor find a difference maker with a half hour remaining perhaps in the season? Level in Waco. Up to the penalty spot and headed wide by Abels. Kaylee Abels always surprises me. She's listed at 5'5", but she has a knack of elevating for those he headers above everybody else. And perhaps that's her time as a volleyball player at Waco High. She's just aggressive. You know, she's an aggressive kind of player. She gets stuck in, whether it's a header or whether it's defensively with her foot. She just has this kind of um, really intense type of style. Even if she's dribbling, you can tell she's putting everything she's got into it. Well, we look at the two ends of the table in the Big 12. Texas is now up three to one on Oklahoma, getting closer to securing that regular season crown outright. And on the opposite end, Kansas has now doubled its lead over Iowa State, and that's clearly what means more to Baylor now. Now, if that's a Kansas win, Baylor doesn't care by how much. Bears just simply need to find a win here at home. Goal differential is not going to be an issue. Unless they happen to tie Kansas on points at which case uh, there's no situation where Kansas doesn't advance based on GD. For Oklahoma State entering the game, number 20. Cowgirls Aaron going back to the bench. First time tonight we see Cheyenne McClary come on. Also entering number four, Cheyenne also see McIntyre in for Dirk 16, as Ben Boyle comes off. McClary the junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. Saw her in 17 matches last year. Tonight, her 18th appearance this season for Oklahoma. And there goes Gabby Mueller again. And this is a nice ball in a space for Coyman out on the wing. Coyman matched up with Simon. And Coyman being pulled from behind. The letter play advantage, presumably. She sends one in towards the back post. But you would understand if a card came out. Or a little tug, and it's just going to be a verbal warning. At first, I didn't think he saw that. But I think you're right. He probably just played advantage, wanted to see how it played out. Coyman doing a good job there, staying on her feet. Again, isolated, though, on that left side. A lot of times, these wide forwards for Baylor just all by themselves and not a lot of help. And it's just up to them to see if they can get it into the box. Obar. Yeah, often when you're pulling at the shirt, you know what you're doing. You're going to concede that foul and risk picking up a yellow, but you believe that it's worth it to stop a high-quality opportunity, but that time no such opportunity came for Baylor. And we have not seen Ashley Miller in the second half since she picked up that first half yellow. Vargas has the other yellow for Baylor, for Oklahoma State, Beldner has the yellow for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. At the moment, still have 11 v 11 with 26 minutes to go here in Waco. As Ava Kohlberg has to take a few strides back before her throw. Ball back over to the Cowgirls. As 
as our referee, Rashawn Clark, is going to talk to Colin Carmichael for a moment. Usually, usually this is on behalf of a fourth official hearing too much from a head coach. This is pretty par for the course for Coach Carmichael, though. <laughs> They're <laughs> on a first-name basis, right? <laughs> getting a talking to from the officials. He's vocal. He's a vocal type. Fortunately for us, he is. He's a great conversation like so many of the coaches in this league. Always enjoyed catching up with them. Colin was on the team bus headed down from Stillwater to Waco when I had a chance to get a few minutes with him. We look forward to getting to talk to all the coaches in Round Rock throughout that busy day of the quarterfinals. The problem is we, we form such a connection with a lot of these teams that we know that only half of them will win that first day and we'll keep trimming that field down throughout the week. Horniak trying to find Coyman in space, but perhaps some tired legs there after putting in some work already in this matchup. Obar back over to Horniak. And Olivia Mack, space to Kohlberg. That's going to free up Merrill, who has come on. Ashley Merrill wants that ball back in the box. They're looking for and Allie Jackson will keep it away. And this one gets past Ables. Treywick may have to come up big here. It's Haynes charging into the box. And it's the Cowgirls who strike first. Oh, there is little that Baylor could do once Megan Haynes hit her stride. Really good run here from Haynes. Abel's just a step too late. See her diving in right the last second, but Haynes was able to release it just before that. And Treywick might, might have been able to come out a bit more, but look at that, just right past into that near post corner. And you know Haynes really wanted that. I mean, she's had a frustrating night up top there, really been kind of knocked around, bumped around up there, really had a hard time getting a hold of it. And then she had that one chance on that far right side in the first half as well. So you know she's really excited that she got her second goal of the season here. She had, had to step in for the talented Olivia Dowell up top. In the opening moments of this match, she put that first shot towards Treywick. This one a beauty. Treywick understood that the bulk of her frame was open to her right. Haynes was somehow able to slip it inside the near post. And it's Oklahoma State in the driver's seat. And at the moment, in line to end the season for Baylor. Mentioned Oklahoma has only given up one goal through now three and a half road matches in the Big 12. Whether home or away, they have been stingy, conceding just 12 goals all year. Three of those 12 came this past weekend to West Virginia and Texas. as Nidus and company will hope for that sixth shutout as this one back over to the Cowgirls. And another card coming out from Rashawn Clark. As that one's for Obar. So three Baylor players playing on a yellow, two of them out there on the pitch right now in the midfield. As Allie Jackson gets us back underway, Cowgirls looking for a quick second strike. After Haynes has the difference maker right now. And a little push from behind will not go unnoticed from the aforementioned Haynes. She does it to Merrill. Now Ashley Merrill, credit to her, just pops up and runs away. Baylor needs to be full strength. With 23 minutes to go for a comeback. And three teams in the Big 12 were still in contention for the final two spots as the other six bids to Round Rock had already been secured, though not necessarily the seeding. But Kansas State, Kansas, and Baylor, the three teams in the running for two spots. Kansas State falls tonight but has the benefit of their resume this year of sitting in seventh right now ahead of Baylor. It would be the Bears who the Jayhawks would leap 
If they can hang on right now, it's a 2-0 lead over Iowa State for Mark Francis's women out of Lawrence, Kansas. And there used to just be nine members in the Big 12. Only one team would miss out. Kansas State came along, and you just figured they were not going to claim one of those eight spots. But Mike Dabini, he's had time put things in place. 2020 would have been their year. Had there been a Big 12 tournament, they would have made it as the seventh seed that year. We saw K-State come here, find a win, and that may prove to be a difference, a late victory that fell the way of the Wildcats. Spoiling an afternoon in which we've got to see Corgi races brighten everyone's day. All right now, Oklahoma State Thanks to Megan Haynes in a full sprint down the pitch. After Abels had pushed forward, an awkward hop that got over Abels and landed at the feet of Haynes, who was full speed towards Trawick, who was on an island at the time. Haynes making no mistake there in that 66th minute. Cowgirls, though, would welcome another. Try to find insurance to feel a little more comfortable. This would do a lot for them, trying to regain some momentum. Remember, they were very much in the championship hunt throughout the first half of this Big 12 schedule. It was the Oklahoma's up at the top there at the beginning of conference yeah, play. It was all Bedlam at the top of the Big 12. Part of that credit belongs to Mark Carr and what he's done in second year. Haynes will send it back to Baylor in the midfield as Augustine sends it out wide. Leach looking for that equalizer. Can't find Coyman as Cowgirls had a couple of eyes, a couple of sets of eyes on her. Horniak, always great with the service. Uh, nobody there on the receiving end. And a handball on Oklahoma State will keep it here with Baylor. That's a tough hop there for Pineda. And hit her foot, then her hand. But by rule, back over to Baylor. Baylor needs two goals to keep their season alive. But they've done this before, Lincoln. We've seen them come back a couple times. Abels, she had found that crossbar earlier, hoping to give Baylor a lead, now looking to level it. Yeah, last year, uh, Gabby Mueller comes to mind, able to turn and fire and find a late goal. We've already seen Renetta Vargas in her first ever start this year against Kansas. Not just one, but two goals in the final few minutes. Beat Iowa State three to two as well. So Baylor has been in this situation and has turned it on. So they just need that type of energy again. They've got plenty of time. If that goal was to come, like it came early and they have time to get two back. Haynes on this one, looking to share the wealth up ahead. A little too heavy, Augustine will clear it into touch. We'll stay with Oklahoma State. With that said, our director, while we were talking about a Baylor comeback, kept the camera shot properly on Jordan Nidus back there in goal. And there's reason to believe that she and this Cowgirl squad are very much up to the task of defending a lone goal advantage the rest of the way. Battle in the corner. With 18 minutes to go, perhaps, in the season for Baylor. That season that began with all those Big Ten teams on the schedule. But a reminder, all of our focus from here on out, Big 12 Conference, as it begins on Sunday in the 2022 Sprouts Farmers Market, Big 12 Soccer Championship, get underway from Round Rock, Texas. Again, three days of coverage, starting with four quarterfinal matchups on Sunday. We'll trim the field down to four teams for the two semifinals on Thursday, November 3rd. All six of those matches early on will be on Big 12 now here on ESPN+. Plus. We'll shift over to ESPNU for the Sunday championship, and that's going to be November 6th at 1 p.m. Central Time. 
as we have several recent champions. Talk about the balance in this conference. Haynes from 18. That shot takes a deflection. Trey Wick keeps it in front of her to avoid conceding another corner kick. But again, you and I, the moment every soccer season gets started, we're excited already for the Big 12 tournament. It is very rare we see the top two seeds collide, but last year Texas and TCU actually managed to survive that bracket. I do think the fact that it's now two weekends rather than three matches over a five plus day span certainly helps the teams that have earned the right for those higher seeds. With that said, we both felt Baylor as an eight seed would not be the team Texas wanted to see based on their recent history. That's often been a match just decided by one goal. Cowgirls trying to double their lead here. Treywick will punch it. And the subsequent shot off the mark from Ben Boydell. We'll get to see uh, number one Texas first in the first quarterfinal. And I highly recommend anybody interested in seeing the Big 12's most likely contender to go deep into the NCAA tournament in Texas. And a couple special players and national teamers, uh, Trinity Byers and Lexi Misimo Byers playing with uh, the U23s this summer. And highly recommend catching that game and seeing those two in action together. They're pretty, pretty special combination, those two. Also have some Canadian internationals as well in that group. Actually just got a verbal commitment from another. You talk about a deep run, 2016, we saw West Virginia go all the way to the College Cup. TCU has had the deepest run since then, a couple years ago. Uh, this might be Ange Kelly's year. Um, Baylor was in the Elite Eight around 2018, of those yeah, special back, years. They did it back-to-back -back years. They were the last Big 12 team still playing. And Texas in the early 2000s was off and around in the Big Eight, uh, Elite Eight. It was just breaking into that Final Four that just seemed to be a problem for the Big 12. A giveaway. Obar calls her own number. That one off the mark, but it took a deflection, a corner kick pending here for Baylor. Oh, uh, big turnover from Oklahoma State. Coyman continues to handle these critical corners for Baylor. Looking to level it here. And back over to the Cowgirls, who do survive this time. I believe the indication was an offside flag. Haven Terry hoping to get on this one, and she does. Uh, it'll find a cowgirl on the way out. It's another corner kick in that far corner with the Brazos River as the backdrop tonight here in Waco. And Coyman doesn't have any obvious targets in terms of size, but Abel's often tends to be in the mix. That one right towards the keeper, Nidus, who clings to it despite some competition. And freshman out of Aurora, Colorado. She's made 16 of the 18 starts this year. We did see Ari Purifoy in a couple of starts earlier this season, the Houston Cougar transfer. Sixty-sixth minute is when the Cowgirls finally stake the claim to the lead. Second goal on the year for Megan Haynes. A beautiful buildup. After a fortunate hop went the way of the Cowgirls, she took advantage of the opportunity and she had Treywick on an island 1v1. Still a high difficulty shot that she was able to bury inside the near post. And now playing on the yellow, this is Beltner trying to double that lead, but it gets away from her. In a full four-year tenure over there in Columbia, Missouri with the Tigers. Beltner with that 70 on her back, your right wing back for Colin Carmichael's Cowgirls this year. Made about two-thirds of the starts this season. 
And she wins this one back. Well, there's some options here for Pineda. Of course, she herself is always an option. Trying to work around Kohlberg. And Kohlberg, excellent job, does not concede the corner and wins it back, sending it back up to midfield. But a short-lived breather for the home side. Trawick will intervene. Horniak forced into duty tonight. Kate Zimmerman got the start but was lost to injury. Coyman is going to win another corner kick and she'll handle it. The seventh corner kick we've seen for these two teams in the second half after Baylor had the only two corners in the opening half. Still has not led to a goal though. It was the sixth on the night for the home team. To the top of the six, Bills loose as Horniak trying to swing that left boot through. And a trainer is going to be called to help out here. Yoakum's going to need a lot of ice baths after this game for sure. Before, Luckily, they get to stay here, right? You said they're staying in Texas. Central, yeah, just down the road. Don't have to travel. I mean, obviously, it's uh, a, you know, a lot really uncomfortable. You've been through some injuries traveling, so they can just rest and recover for the Big 12 tournament here in Texas. Another look. As Horniak had Yoakum throw herself at that ball. Now Yoakum... Uh, at least wanted a little more attention to the fact she thought she was caught by the high kick. As Renetta Vargas again celebrating her birthday today. Was hoping to be able to celebrate a little bit more with her teammates as she comes on, but boy, what a splash she has made in her Big 12 debut this year. As I think they're working out some paperwork at the substitution desk across the way. Vargas made that splash beginning against Kansas. That was her first start. It was the third Big 12 match of the season for Baylor when Vargas finally was out of that boot. Might also be uh, adjusting the time here. And, you know, the time's always with the official in the middle, but often, you know, they just want to make sure it matches up with the board and that everyone's on the same page. Obviously, time very important for Baylor right now. So, you know, Coach Leonard is watching yep. that. I think I heard an appeal possible. for them to add 45 minutes, but I, <laughs> I don't think that prevailed. We're inside 11. And again, we've been doing our best to keep track for you. The, the landscape around the Big 12 tonight, Longhorns are getting closer to locking up sole possession of the regular season title for the first time in 11 years for Ange Kelly with that program. After last year, they made it to their first final under Ange Kelly, making steps. They would love to lift that trophy at the end of this year, just like Eric Bell's women did for the first time last season. But on the other side of things, well, it's a nice luxury to talk about what your seed's going to be. There was no guarantee Baylor would even be in that tournament. And at the moment, they are on the outside looking in because Kansas is up on Iowa State. Last time we checked, 2-0. So a little bit of breathing room for the Jayhawks, despite the year they have had. They would have all the excuses necessary to miss the Big 12 tournament for a second straight year. But it looks like Kansas is going to find enough points to leap Baylor if the Bears don't find a full three points here at home. State's last home match, the loss against Texas essentially knocked them from contention for the regular season crown. Well, they're likely going to be in the top half of the bracket. And at the moment, entering Round Rock on the heels of a win on the road. Horniak, 30 yards out. Sarah Horniak will chip it in. Merrill trying to find a better angle for her teammate. Uh, nobody on that back post to play with. A 
lot of players on both sides in this match with slightly different roles than they've been trying to work within throughout the season. So you understand if some of these balls just don't quite find the punctuation they're hoping for. Leach. Kohlberg with space out wide, trying to close her down is Ben Boydell. And Ben Boydell constantly moving on that one. Yoakum. All of this just melts more time off that clock. It is back over to Baylor, but it's Oklahoma State right now successfully defending the goal advantage given to them by Megan Haynes in the 66th minute. And if you're preparing for tournament play, this is a really good scenario for Oklahoma State being up 1-0 against a really tough opponent and needing to maintain that composure throughout the end of the game. You and I were talking about how Kansas State was able to get a PK at the end of the game against Baylor because it just seemed like Baylor started getting messy and broke down, and they just weren't composed at the end of the game. So for Oklahoma State, they just want to stay real solid and play smart, don't give up fouls, and just keep Baylor at bay. Coyman. This will stay with Baylor. And another substitution for both sides. Because Baylor's making the sub with Oklahoma State, you don't stop the clock. Had that just been Oklahoma State, they would have stopped the clock for a time-wasting policy. There's Matty Algy back on. Leach on the elbow. Oh, Leach with some nifty footwork. Will it lead to an equalizer for Baylor? And the answer continues to be no. This time Molly Briner will send that one into the Brazos River. Vargas back on. Baylor with numbers into the box. Looking to level this one as Obar will send that one wide. That's the kitchen sink now, Lincoln. You saw Matty Algy come on for a defender. They have a three back. Horniak was kind of pushing up and staying really high, so actually it looked like Baylor only had two in the back for a long time there. So they're just gonna fly numbers. Remember, they need two goals, not just one. Got to find that first one first, I'm told. Less than six minutes to do so. Jayhawks have, in fact, won tonight 2-0 over Iowa State as the bottom two teams in the league collided on the final day. Only a Baylor win can deny the Jayhawks and keep Baylor playing soccer here in 2022. Uh, Baylor's giving themselves chances here. Obar, she has not been shy, but blocked by Yoakum. That'll just be another bump and bruise for Yoakum tonight. Horniak realized the moment that left her foot, it was just going to be a bit off. Oh, she wanted it back. I don't know that you're going to beat Nidus that way. But that's going to be tough. I think just sending, there was lots of numbers in the box there. I just think dumping it into the box around that PK spot, around the six, getting as many white jerseys in there as possible, creating havoc. I think that's how you're going to get a goal. Is almost like a garbage goal against Knight. She's just so good. It's going to be hard to beat her from 25 yards out. Yeah, looking for chaos. Abels will send a friendly ball back to Trawick, who will try to get the green and gold back on track with four and a half minutes to go. Baylor needs at least two goals in this one. Baylor's conference wins this year against Kansas and a big comeback late. Again, that's when we were introduced to Renetta Vargas. Another win at Iowa State. Into the box, looking for Coyman, still lingers. And I think Coyman lost track of it when the Cowgirls struggled to clear it initially. 
Can Baylor force Oklahoma State just to continue to defend on their heels for the remaining three and a half minutes? Uh, an hour ago, that one went final. West Virginia with the victory over K-State and a floater in from Horniak, who's sent the past couple of balls in. Again, Texas has already locked up the regular season title. Texas Tech and TCU were playing for the second seed. I believe TCU is the two seed now. Texas Tech the three seed. Oklahoma State in line for four. Oklahoma State, we're expecting to have a date with West Virginia. And that's going to be a fun one. Texas, three goals. Trinity Byers, I believe it's now eight straight games with at least one goal as they knock off Oklahoma in Austin on senior night. And I'm told there's a match in Waco as well with three minutes to go. Vargas trying to turn and find a goal here on her birthday. And Oklahoma State is going to have to continue to weather this attack from Baylor. Of course, Cowgirls want the outright win. Baylor, it's all or nothing. Need at least two goals here with two and a half minutes to go. Algie, with space, her left-footed offering goes one. It'll be a goal kick, which takes more time off the clock. We'll probably be close to the two-minute mark before this one's sent back into play. Jordan Nidus looking for her sixth shutout on the year for the freshman. Helping lead Oklahoma State to a victory here in the season finale. As Oklahoma State wins this ball, as more time will melt away. And this is where the Cowgirls can close it out. Megan Haynes will be responsible for the game winner tonight. If Baylor can't find an answer, back in the 66th minute. And let's see which direction Rashawn Clark is headed. And the clock is back at a minute 36. And I believe that's what we were waiting on. Colin Carmichael was just curious if he was going to get another visit. So in a moment, official congratulations to K-State. We'll see Mike Dabini's upstart program get its first official berth into the Big 12 tournament as the seven seed. Kansas the eight seed, I believe, if my math still holds up. Unfortunately for Baylor, they will finish ninth. Iowa State, we already knew, was going to miss out. The throw from Morris. Sixty seconds remaining in the Baylor season. Looking for some heroics here down the stretch. Leach, 25 yards out. Left-footed service, that probe denied. Cowgirls will continue to just send that ball back into touch and let more of that clock melt away. Looking for the equalizer. And that should just about do it. The freshman from Aurora, Colorado, Nidus. And now for the Cowgirls, you're just trying to get out of Waco with uh, as few bumps and bruises as possible. We've seen Yoakum go down three times today, make it a fourth. But three points will help that. Oklahoma State comes to Waco, finds a win, and they finish their Big 12 road slate unbeaten. Going a perfect 4-0 on the road in Big 12. They hope that translates to success on